If you're watching this, you probably got your Tyro 99 build by now. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of the Betaflight configuration stuff. I'm using Betaflight Configurator 10.4.0. It's down here in the corner. So you can, whoa, judge the age of this video based off the version that I have. So I go ahead and I plug it in. Let's hope it works. Yes, it does. Now, if it doesn't work, you need to first try a different USB cable. That's the easiest thing to try. Don't get one that's the exact same brand or came out of the same package. You get a different one. If that doesn't work, then you probably need to try a different uh, computer. And either one of those should be able to fix the problem. So the first thing on here we want to check is just a good idea to do. Go into the CLI mode and type in version. And this will tell you what version of software is on your flight controller right now. And this is the Matek F405. Matek F405. And it's version 350. There's actually a 351 available that you could flash on here if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that right now. But that's always a good thing to check first. That way, if you mess it up and you want to reflash it, you know what um, to select inside Betaflight. So when you get off the CLI, it's just going to reboot the flight board just because uh, that's what it does. Okay, hopefully when you move your uh, compute, when you move your quad around, it's actually making mirroring the movements here, and mine is so that's good. Here on this ports tab, we want to make sure that UART2 is turned on, the serial RX, and then we should be good, assuming that you're using the S bus. Next here on the configuration tab, we want to come over here and change the one shot to D shot 600, and scroll down a little bit, and we're going to turn on, this, this can handle the 32 gig uh, kilohertz sampling, so we'll turn that on, and we'll turn off uh, the barometer since we don't have one, turn off the magnetometer since we don't have one, and we're going to set this arming. Instead of 25, you want to set this to 180. That way it can arm even if it's upside down. And the craft name, you can put in here whatever you want. I usually just put Kahuna so that way if somebody watches my feed they know who it is. The camera, I don't really know that it makes any difference, but I, I like to put mine at 45. And then down here on the receiver, this is where you want to put in a uh, serial based receiver, SBUS. And then make sure this one here says SBUS. I don't have any soft serial stuff, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, and I just leave the rest of it there. And that should be good enough for this tab. You want to click on this motor direction is reversed. Alright, so moving on to the PID tuning tab. Over here on this page, if you just leave it all the same, it should fly pretty well. Sometimes people will have specific settings they want to put in here, but the defaults should be good enough. If you know what you want changed, then you're beyond beginner and you're probably doing fine. Here on the receiver tab, you want to make sure that your receiver is talking correctly to your um, receiver, or your transmitter is talking correctly to your receiver. And if it's not, if you put if you plug it in in the little quad down the corner here, it starts spinning around like crazy. You probably have to change your channel map from AETR to TAER. You can just click in there and erase the letters and retype them and then save it. And then it should start behaving the way that you expect. All right, I just plugged mine in and here it is spinning, <laughs> spinning there. So up here in these, up here I'm going to change these letters to TAER and go ahead down here and hit save. And look at that, Wally Wally, there it is. Okay, and it's doing what I'm telling it to. Okay, so you also want to check your throws up here. They should be going down to 1,000 and up to 2,000. If they're a little off, you can adjust your endpoints, but you know it's not. some people won't care that much, and most people probably won't even notice. All these are actually pretty good already. That's good to know. My auxiliary one works good, and my auxiliary two works good. All right, so all mine are set up correctly. There shouldn't be anything else on here that you really need to change. Over here on the modes tab, this is where if you're going to put your arming on a switch, you can do it here or you can use the uh, bottom right and bottom left to, on your throttle to arm it and disarm it. If you want to do angle mode where it's kind of it's going to level the quad every time you let go of the throttle, you can turn this one on and set it to one of your auxiliary channels. This is where you would put your arm or set your arm if you want to put it to a switch. I just use bottom left and bottom right on my throttle to uh, make them work, so I'm not going to use those. I'm going to turn these off. In fact, I'm not, probably not going to set anything in here. There's some people want to use like the um, what is the air mode? Here's an air mode. 
and some people want to use the uh, something else. But I usually use flip over after crash, but I don't see it in here. I don't know, maybe it didn't get in this version. Oh well, not a big deal. All right, now moving on to the motors. I need to make sure that the motors all spin the correct direction. So what you want to do is make sure your battery's plugged in and you don't have any props on it because it, this could potentially go all over the place if you have props. So just, just don't do it. Don't do the props on. Take them off. All right, so we're going to check the motor directions. And in the way that I have this set up, I have the, um, let me turn it over here again, the black nut is up here in the front, and this propeller is actually going to spin this direction, and this one is going to spin this direction, where the middle of the props are coming out of the middle of the quad. They're coming up around and out like this. Now, you can also do a re reverse or uh, leave your props the normal direction, where this one spins this way and this one spins this way, but in this case, it's going to be reversed. And the reason for reversed is that when you go down into the grass, the props aren't throwing grass into your camera. It's actually trying to get stuff away from your camera. And I've had better luck surviving crashes by reversing the props. Back here on the motors tab, the first thing we need to do is to check to make sure the motors are all spinning the correct direction and that they are actually numbered correctly, where this one's one, two, three, and four. And the way you do that is come up here into Betaflight on the motors tab. You need to turn on this little understand the risk slider. And then first thing we're gonna do is check the motor direction. So I'm gonna grab the master. I'm just gonna slide it up a little bit. There we go. Great one of the motors sounds cracky, crackly. This one is spinning correctly. This one is spinning correctly. This one's spinning correctly. This only this one is spinning backward. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the master slider. I'm gonna check the first motor, make sure the back one is right. Yep. Good. And motor number two should be this one. Yep. I'll check motor number three, which should be the back left. Yep. And motor number four. Yep, should be the front right, front left one. So they're all good except for this one here is spinning backward. So we're gonna fix that in um, the other program, not beta flight, the other one. So it would be all heli sweet, I guess. All right, so since everything looks good here, we should be done except for the OSD. This one does have the on-screen display, so we want to go ahead and select what we want to see and where and you can where you want to see it on your screen. So there's a couple things that I like to do. I like to have my timers turned on. That way I can see how long a flight time I'm getting, especially when I'm um, reviewing the footage later. I also like to have the craft name on so people can see the, my name when it comes on here if they join onto my channel. And then I also know that I'm on the right channel. And since this one does not have uh, smart audio, you don't need to have the uh, VTX channel on there. But the other one I like to have is the main voltage battery and the there it is, throttle position. The reason I like to have the throttle position is it lets me know if I'm actually pushing the quad as hard as I should. And it's not really useful while you're flying. It's more for a reviewing type of thing to make sure that you're flying it correctly and pushing hard when the straightaways where you should and you know just see how far up on the throttle you're getting. And then the next thing to do is to move all this stuff around so that it all sits where you want it to sit. The only thing that's backward is the one motor is spinning the wrong direction. So I need to open up BL Heli Suite and uh, get uh, reversed. All right, so here we are in BL Heli Suite. Go ahead and hit connect. There it connects. Let's read the setup down here in the corner. All right, so on here, the beep strength, I'm going to raise the beep strength up to about 65, and the beacon strength is at 80. I'll put it down a little bit, maybe 80, uh, well, up a little bit, 87. Beacon delay, this is where I like two minutes because when I crash, I want to start beeping sooner rather than later. All right, so over here on the left side, on the right side, I need to find motor one or ESC one, which is up here. And I'm going to change it to say reversed. And then go ahead and hit uh, right setup. And that should write all this stuff into the ESC. So it should be reversed now and it should be good to go. All right, if you need to update your firmware on these, you can do flash all and it will uh, look for the latest firmware and go ahead and flash each one. If you do that, sometimes you have to reset all your settings on this side, but it's not that big of a deal. You usually don't lose your reversed settings, so don't have to worry about that. It'll, it'll keep that stuff and rewrite it at the end. All right, so if we disconnect from that, yeah, they're a little louder now. 
I'll go ahead and connect back into here. I'll go back over to my motors tab and I'm going to turn this on and check motor one, which is the crackly one. Oh, there it's going pretty good. All right, so here it is. And now it's spinning the correct direction. So I need all the motors to spin with the props coming out the back and out the front. The two front ones are gonna spin this direction and this direction, and the two back ones are going to spin this direction and this direction. So they're always throwing air and debris out away from the quad. The bad thing is they're gonna throw it into the side of the quad, but better the side than in the front. So hopefully that'll keep, let me keep seeing okay when I'm done. So that should be all you need to do inside BL Heli, or inside uh, Betaflight and BL Heli. If you need to reverse the props, it's not too bad. The other thing you can do is you can go into the, the 4-in-1 ESC and reverse two of the wires and that'll spin the motor backward also, but that's more of a pain than just doing it through the software. So, at this point, it should be ready to fly. The Tower 99 came with 10 sets of props. This R means right, and these are the lefts. Okay, so the R's, they have to, they're, they look like this. They're going to spin with the top here to the right. And so we want the, this one to go up here. And this is going to go on the, one, on the motors that you have with the, uh, black, the black nuts here. And one thing to know, you got the correct um, shaft with the right prop, is that if you turn the nut down the, the direction the prop falls, so the prop in this case is falling down to the left here, you can see it kind of goes this direction, that is the way that you want it to work. You want the nuts to tighten turning down the, um, down the prop. And the reason is because it's going to spin this way and if it hits something, the prop is going, to, is going to be forced backward a little bit and you want it to tighten this nut rather than loosen it. So keep that in mind. If you put them on backward, you'll have a lot of prop nuts flying off and props going missing and you'll have a, bat, a worse time flying. All right, so right ones go on the black nuts and the left ones go on the silver ones. All right, should be in business. And like I said, this is going to spin out of the middle. So these, the middle part here will be spinning away from the camera. And so your prop should be generating lift spinning this direction, both of them. And the opposite back here, this one should be, they should both be spinning the opposite of the ones in the front. These are the same, these are the same. Pushing out away from the inside of the quad. Good, all right, take it outside and give it some flying. All right, here we go. The, it's kind of down there in the corner. Get it up in the air. All right. It's flying all right. It's a little not responsive right now. It's running on a 4S battery that's a little bit dead. Let's see if it, do some, if it can do some flips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this battery's really low. Okay, I guess should land. But anyway, yes, yeah, flying real well. Cool. It also only has dual blades on it. Which it really could use tri-blades on a 4S battery. But that dual or bi blades are good to learn on, but really, I think you need tri blades. Okay, anyway, let's get to the fine field.